We were on our bombing run when we were hit by flak. There was an enormous explosion under us and the aircraft seemed to lift and our t two, our, two of our engines immediately went on fire. And the aircraft immediately started to descend, into, went into a descent. Um, we checked and Phil checked up with us all and, uh, and he said, I can't hold her anymore. And so everyone was, everyone was able to bail out except the rear gunner. And Jim and I, Jim Gillies and I, the two survivors, uh, believed that he must have been killed with the flak because his body was thrown clear of the wrecked aircraft in a wood some kilometres away. But I, uh, I had difficulty. <laughs> my guns stopped on the beam, and you, to get out of my turret, you had to have the guns fore or aft. And the hydraulics were all shut out. My, my turret hydraulics were were, were uh, empowered by one of the engines that had been shot out. And I had to manually wind the turret round to get out of it, which took very valuable seconds of time. And then I pulled off my helmet my, with my, my oxygen lead and my communications thing, and it got tangled up a bit. And it took me a few seconds to try and free myself of the turret and the next thing I found myself falling and I hit the floor of the fuselage, which is quite a distance below the turret. And uh, somehow I'd broken my hip. Right up, my femur, right up near the hip. And my parachute pack was adjacent to the turret on the fuselage, side of the fuselage, and I had a, a reaching exercise to, to, to get it. It was on two clamps on the side of the fuselage, and I had some difficulty getting it, but I finally was able to reach it. And by this time, the attitude of the aircraft was nosed down. And I had to uh, virtually crawl uphill to the open door. I found it was open, fortunately. Possibly the the wireless op had gone out there because it would have been under me and I didn't see him in my problems. But the door was open <clears throat> and I was able to reach the door and roll out. <clears throat> 